Hello EA TV viewers. My name is Michael DeForty and I am here at the third annual Florida Bigfoot Investigators Expedition. And we are here with a documentary crew who is going to be uh, also documenting the expedition here tonight. I am uh, joined by uh, Tim Fasano. Tim Fasano is a very big uh, Bigfoot and Sasquatch enthusiast. And uh, Tim just wanted to uh, kind of get your, your kind of uh, pretty much your outlook here. What is the significance of this date? Well, the significance of this date is that it's the, the week of the first cold snap of the fall season in Central Florida. And there's a theory among cryptozoologists that it's the beginning of migratory season, that you have migratory populations of, of cryptid primates that are moving from one part of Florida to the, to the other. Um, just like snowbirds, you know, Florida's known for snowbirds. And the last two years, we have actually captured, uh, found significant evidence. George and Kevin, uh, two years ago, found footprints not far from where we're at right now. And last year, I, I got what I believe was a sighting, which was verified by um, certain members high up in the Bigfoot uh, world. And I uh, caught that on video. So uh, I think the, the, theor the theory is sound. And it makes sense to be out here at this time of the year. It's also uh, coupled with the theory of permanent population levels. Uh, they're primates. They're like humans. Many of them get elderly, they get old, they get comfortable. They get like me, they're comfortable, they get a little crotchety and they'd rather just sit down and they've got water and vegetation, they've got animals to eat, and they kind of like it here. So they just tell the rest of them, go on, go on, we'll see you next season. I believe that's what was going on last Sunday when I went out to an area that Kevin and I have, have deployed trail cams in and verified, authenticated uh, an abundance of wildlife. And I heard as the sun set, like it is now, and it got dark, I was the only one out there, there was a trailhead, it was the only car out there, there was no reason why anyone would be out there. Most of the area that was off trail was underwater because Florida had a record amount of rainfall this year. And I recorded howls in the distance that were Sounded like several of them, woo, ah, woo, just hooping it up. There's no way there could have been anyone out there. No way. Uh, the, it was a primate that was making those sounds. I believe it was like one group was meeting the other. Like, hey, man, what up? Ain't seen you in five months. So this is what I think was going on. Maybe we'll get something like that tonight. Who knows? This is an inexact science. You now, what, what, what kind of equipment are you going to be using on this investigation? Okay, I use really very simple equipment. I, I learned in photography. I used to be a professional photographer for 10 years at Sarasota Herald Tribune. And it's not your equipment. It's, it's your skill. I've, I've got this that I'm holding in my hand, which is an HTC phone, which shoots high definition. And also have an HD camera, this one right here that I use, and a flashlight, and that's the extent of my high-tech gear. So pretty much what you're saying is is that it's not necessarily the gear that you have; it's more of your um, your wilderness experience and actually coming in contact with these uh, particular creatures. Is that kind of like what you're what you're trying well, to convey? It's a combination of experience and fine-tuning your beliefs, your theories with that experience, and nuancing it with your style. And eventually, just like anything else in life, nothing beats experience, you become better at it. When you're new at this, you don't know what you're doing. You just go out in the woods and you hear a squirrel runs up a tree and you think it's Bigfoot because you hear someone go ch -ch 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 -ch. You eventually learn it's just a squirrel. So you can separate the sounds from one animal to the next. And that's why I can say absolutely what I heard last Sunday out in that watershed area you know, was a primate was making that sound. It was not a, a bobcat. I've heard bobcats. I've recorded bobcats. I've recorded a fox, too, that I uh, searched through many an MP3 file to uh, ascertain that it was actually a fox that I'd recorded. See, contrary to popular belief, I do as much as I can to try to debunk what I find. And if I can't really readily explain it, 
then I'll put it up on YouTube. Um, and that's pretty much how I, I work this business. Uh, it either, something will either happen tonight or it won't. And we can't force the issue. Well, uh, Tim, I, I do appreciate your information and your input on this uh, subject. And uh, EA TV viewers, we're going to be back. And uh, then you'll see us on the expedition here with Mr. Tim Fasano, as well as uh, Florida Bigfoot investigators. And we're going to go out there and we're going to try to uh, possibly capture some evidence of this elusive creature here in the Green Swamp. Stay tuned. sightings in 2007. source of information from some of the top UFO researchers in the world. Exclusive information that cannot be found anywhere else on the planet. Trusted, connected, accurate. The UFOstore.com. Expand your personal library with fast shipping and instant downloadable information from the largest selection of UFO products on the internet by going to the UFOstore.com. The truth is out there. And the UFOstore.com has it. Bigfoot sighting. Big old hairy guy. He's even taller than Kevin. Welcome back EA TV viewers, Michael DeForty here, and I'm here with some documentary uh, folks here that uh, normally go out and do documentaries on Bigfoot, and uh, this is Brian and Sam, they're going to be with us on the expedition this evening. So uh, guys, uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Uh, basically, we are Big Wolf Productions, and we are making a documentary on the skunk ape and people who look for it. Uh, we started just probably about a month and a half ago, two months. Uh, went out with um, Stacy Brown Jr. and did some stuff with him, and now we're here meeting with uh, Tim and uh, going out and trying to find, see what they do, and uh, yeah. we're trying to that. show why people would be passionate about passionate about it, why it's something that you would go do, and it's not necessarily something that's really out there or anything. No, you, normal people, it's just camping really with 
some exploration. Depends on who you're talking to, but... <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So have you guys captured any kind of evidence yet, or are you guys just kind of hoping for that, that one big break that uh, you guys are like, oh my gosh, that's that's a skunk ape, that's a Bigfoot? Uh, we're still looking. Yeah, um, we're still hoping for that. Break. On our last trip, we thought we almost had something, and then it turned out to just be another person. <laughs> um, so we got really excited for a second there, but then nothing, nothing mm -hmm. came from it. So yeah, we're still definitely waiting to, to get a, get it all captured on here. Well, that's <laughs> fantastic, guys. I mean, I admire your passion and you know coming out here on this expedition with us. And who knows, this third annual uh, Florida Bigfoot Investigators uh, expedition might yield some really great evidence. So you guys might get your first shot. And we're here with. Uh, uh, Josh Ball, and uh, he is actually the newest member of the EARS investigative expedition team. And uh, because this is our third annual uh, expedition out here to look for Sasquatch or Bigfoot, um, from what I understand, you're you're kind of the greenhorn out here. And uh, what, um, what you know, what excites you about this whole situation? I'm excited just to see some actual evidence. I'm excited to be with the team, just get out here and uh, get on the expedition and see what happens. Hopefully we get some good footage. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, this is this is why this subject is so big, is because so many people are, are so curious as to what's going on out there, whether this is a deer, a bear, or whatnot. And, uh, you know, I hope for you and I hope for everybody else out here that we do yield some great evidence tonight. And uh, from what I understand, since this is the third annual uh, expedition, the first two times we captured some great evidence out here. So uh, hopefully we can make it happen tonight and uh, we catch a skunk ape. That's what we're looking for is to get rid of the debunks and let's get some real footage. Welcome back EATV. My name is Michael DeForty here and I am uh, joined here by uh, Rob Bogus. He's actually our, our wildlife and survivalist expert here on this expedition, which uh, I do want to mention is the FBI third annual expedition. Uh, Rob, the first two uh, expeditions found some just absolute compelling evidence. Now, we did find a structure that's out there uh, earlier. Unfortunately, you weren't able to join us for the first uh, segment of that expedition, but you're coming on the second one, thankfully. Um, I just want to know, what, what are you guys looking for out here? Uh, as far as looking for this animal, this creature? Uh, typically what I would look for is, is prints. That's what I typically look for when I'm trying to track any animal or hunting or trapping or anything like that. You're looking for footprints. Okay, and uh, do you feel that this this possible creature might get a little bit aggressive? Let's say if, you know, if we, if we find him somewhere out there, do you think that this animal may you know, charge us, may come at us, or do you think it's more uh, probably susceptible just to kind of run away and try to kind of keep itself covered? I would say run away. Most animals that I encounter out there, they're, whether it be big black bear, hogs, deer, they all run away typically. Well, that's absolutely fantastic, I do have to say, because uh, if, if a Sasquatch decides to run at me, that might be an interesting uh, situation. We might need to catch that on camera. Uh, well, Rob, I, I do appreciate you joining us, and uh, we are going to kind of get your take on the uh, on the supposed shelter uh, that we uh, that we found out there. Uh, it was really some just compelling thing to look at. It, it was very, uh, very interesting. So uh, you uh, on uh, EATV, we look forward for you guys joining us on this third annual expedition. Uh, me, Rob Bogus, and uh, the FBI investigators team, we're going to be out there hunting for this Sasquatch and uh, hopefully we get some great evidence. So stay tuned and don't miss it. My name is Michael DeFord and I'm the lead investigator for the Seekers Paranormal Society. About seven years ago, I had my first paranormal experience. Now armed with the latest in paranormal equipment, I'm setting out to find the truth. Joining me on my quest to capture evidence is my equipment tech, Ramon Vivas, and investigator, Steve Weldon. Take a front seat into our paranormal world as we are driven into the unknown. We are. Seekers Paranormal Society.
For hundreds of years, those that have been curious enough to look to the stars in search of something beyond ourselves have been shunned, persecuted, and laughed at. Now, it's time for those curious few to laugh back. Saucer Seekers is a hilarious online comic strip that takes a humorous look at our world of disinformation while facing everyday life from the point of view of those who devote their lives to the search for the truth. The Saucer Seekers! TheSaucerSeekers.com Yes, indeed, the same pitch, which means that I recorded out in the field around midnight the same animal that the BFRO had in 2006, which is on their website as the Florida Howl. It is very well possible that this is the Florida Bigfoot or the Skunk Ape, but there's no doubt in my mind, based on the pitch and tone of this animal, even though the the report was not the the vocal was not as drawn out as the other one uh, it is the same tone and pitch it has to be the same animal you think it's Tim? yeah I mean, camp's just right over there, so we can still hear them if they uh, bang something. No? Doesn't he have a radio? Yeah. I'm asking his location. Tim, you got me? Yeah, Roger, Tim, what's up? What's your 20? Are you on the main road, still at camp? Mm -hmm. Main road. That's not Should him. we be rolling the tape? We heard something and wanted to know if you were still at base mm -hmm. camp. Is, is he knocking at all? Have you been knocking? Have you been knocking? A negative. Yeah. Copy that, thank you. And it's coming from over there. And it, it kind of like sloped to the right and then it went down. I mean, it could have been an animal, but... It didn't seem like it was, like it got scared. Rob, you want to hit it? Where'd he go? Kevin, something's walking over here. What? I can hear something walking. It sounded like we were walking up on it, and it was moving further and further away. Shot it again? Yeah, it was a, it was a big deer. Yeah, two just walking. Yeah, we just caught some eye shine that turned out to be a deer. It's so funny, my dad's a hunter, and I've seen more deer. Mike like caught it. It was really cool. It was raised <laughs> up and down. So funny. Down for a split second, my heart jumped. Yeah. When it, cause it went like this. It went, da it went down like it was trying to evade it. So I was like, what the hell? Wow. That's 
with night vision? Yeah, it's working. You getting some good images? Yeah. Alpha team met up with Bravo team. Yeah. Alpha team anything? You gonna put this on YouTube? No, this is EATV. Alright. EATV? EATV. Watch it. Channel 38. Did you see anything? We were tracking something. We really were. Oh, wait a minute. This hiking trail goes in through there. I think it goes up to Richland. Mike caught some mine shine. Yeah, kind it was pretty interesting. Freaked us out for here. Now, Tim, when you did your your call, the first time we heard something respond to you and Kevin tried to get you to do it again. Very faint and high pitched. It was yeah. very faint and high pitched. It was I like I think I heard it too. And it was, it was off the, it was off, off in this direction. That the, that it came you were wanting me to do it again? It yeah, I was like let another one yeah. rip. Oh wow. That's good. it's gonna be good to be <laughs> on camera. <laughs> no, you kept saying let another one rip and I told the cameraman, I said oh, Kevin likes to f out at the most inappropriate times. <laughs> Why don't you try it again? Can you you actually that? heard something respond. Yes. yes. We thought we did, yeah. And it's but we weren't sure what and it was. So we, we, thought it was we thought it was a coyote, and then we asked Rob, and Rob goes, that's not a coyote. Were you rolling any tape or anything? No, at the time. When I, I started it afterwards. Do one. Right here, right now. You warm up like Pavarotti. Yeah, well, I, I want to get out of the way. Everybody it's, kill your lights. Because it's super loud. <coughs> Turn your cameras on or whatever. I got my camera. You real quiet. Shh. Thirty seconds. I'm <coughs> 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 Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, nothing today. But what you heard it, the response when you were way back in there. Yeah. Okay. High pitched. But definitely heard something. Yeah. AEA TV viewers, just wanted to kind of give you guys an update. Um, we have heard some noises and sounds and things like that. Uh, as of right now, um, Alpha Team is, uh, or I'm sorry, Bravo Team is heading now back to base camp. And uh, Alpha Team consisting of uh, myself, Kevin Keel, Rob Bogus, and uh, uh, Brian uh, are going to uh, push further into the forest here. And we're going to try to see if we can possibly uh, capture uh, where this specific uh, noises were coming from. So stay tuned, guys. It's going to be some exciting stuff. A dead black racer. He oh, he is. He's dead. Doesn't look to be very, uh, very old though. In terms of his death, he's not not, not all rigor mortis up yet. Yeah. yeah. The bugs have just got to. Yeah. Getting a little bit long. Hey guys, this is uh, Michael DeForty, the host of EA TV, and we're uh, we're out here doing uh, uh, the third annual Bigfoot uh, investigation out here in uh, the Green Swamp, and uh, things turned 
kind of paranormal for me. Uh, I noticed as we were on this trail here, you can notice the white of the trail and we're pretty much lights out at this point. And I actually saw something run down the trail at me and actually run through me. I guess if you guys can picture kind of a ghost train uh, almost going through somebody. That's almost what I felt. Enough to where it prompted me to turn my torch on and see if I could find out what it was. And I actually scared some of the gentlemen with me because um, it was such a, a hastily uh, kind of turn on the flashlight to see if somebody was there. I expected somebody to be there and to no avail. There was nobody standing there. It sounded like it was coming out of the freaking brush. I was like, knife? <laughs> <laughs> 